Hi folks, this is Glenn Maurer and I'm here today to do another episode of the Next Step uh, Santa Barbara Cable 17. Uh, this show, as those of you who have seen it before know, tries to deal with issues of concern and interest to environmentalists, the progressives, uh, Green Party uh, platform uh, perhaps, uh, things that we uh, are interested in and care about and think that you should care about too. Uh, one of the things that I'm particularly interested in and, and have been caring about over the last few years is uh, where we're getting our food in, in our society and uh, what, uh, how we're going to distribute that food to a population that is growing so rapidly and avoid the pollution and the waste that, uh, that is engendered uh, when that food is distributed uh, and produced and made. And we did a, another show a few weeks ago, I thought, uh, that you might want to see about uh, animals as food, as a, uh, animals as a source of food, and the impact of that uh, product. Uh, we're going to do a, a today show uh, a little bit different. It's it's uh, going to be uh, s focused on waste of food from growing production processing and to the consumer table, uh, and and the amount of waste that is incurred in that whole process. Uh, the show will be on Cable 17, as I mentioned. It'll also be available on uh, YouTube and Ustream. You can Google The Next Step TVSB, and you can see uh, uh, this show either on Ustream or Google. Ah, YouTube, I do that often. Um, and other shows that we've done over the years, including the one I mentioned before about animals as food. Today, uh, so in order to make this point and discuss it a little bit further, uh, we have a uh, really fortunate to have with us uh, a representative of the Food Bank of Santa Barbara, Jamie Nichols. Uh, Jamie is the Director of Operations mm -hmm. and um, at the Food Bank. Uh, the Food Bank of Santa Barbara County uh, is a wonderful group. Uh, my wife and I have long been contributors to Food Bank of Santa Barbara and I've really appreciated the, the people, people there, the work they do, and uh, the efficient and effective way they managed to go about helping. Um, 10 million pounds of food a year go through Food Bank of Santa yeah. Barbara County? Yep, just about, just under. 10 million pounds of food. And this is food that is donated, uh, recovered. Uh, how, how do you eat your foods? We'll do anything we can do to get uh, extra food. So some of it's purchased if we can't get it in the mm -hmm. quantity we need but the vast majority of it is either donated or actively rescued from um, you know, grocery stores, from farms. Okay, and I think the operative word you just used, and there's the Food Bank logo, and you know, anybody who wants to help their effort, and I think it's just an amazing, the non-political, you know, this is the essence of need in, in, the, in, the, in the country and need being met by local community activism. So anybody that wants to help in doing this, I really encourage it, uh, Food Bank SBC, org is the place you can go online and get the information about what they do. Um, I, I give contributions if you want, contributions of food. Contrib I mentioned uh, we, before that we were, I, one of my fond memories is going through the line around Thanksgiving when we used to get frozen turkeys for free because we spent a hundred dollars worth of food yeah. and they give you an extra turkey. Getting in line and handing those turkeys off as we went through the Patterson, uh, not the Patterson, but the Hollister uh, uh, location uh, drop-off points, yep, yep. Uh, and it almost felt like uh, maybe you'd be on a sled back in the east doing that, but this is California's version of charitable contributions. Anyway, a uh, good group. So, um, you mentioned that the, the food comes to you in various ways, uh, discarded and otherwise uh, uh, food, and, and what made me really want to do this program is a um, this concept of how much are we wasting and then I happened to have a chance, and almost by accident, I watched a program on a cable television called Just Eat It. Um, if we can get that logo up there, I think that would be helpful. Uh, Just Eat It, a food waste story, is a program uh, that, just, that really, it's an hour and a half program, and we, we hope to have a leader a little uh, tease, a minute and a half tease of the of the movie uh, that you could watch, but we, we're having some trouble getting the audio up on that. So I'm not going. We're not going to put it up and have it in my mode. But I will tell you what happens in this in this documentary. And it's a documentary. Uh, it's these, these people in Canada who uh, decide they will go out into the world and discover 
how much food can they uh, obtain without having to buy it or pay for it, or very cheaply pay for it, from sources that are otherwise going to waste that food. They're just going to throw it. And, you, and so, of course, you immediately get the image uh, of dem di dumpster, dumpster divers, yeah, right. people going into muck behind restaurants, or people going into you know, these old galvanized trash cans and pulling stuff out and eating bad lettuce or something. Well, watch this program. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be stunned uh, stunned by what you see. Uh, if you can find it somewhere to see, just eat it, a food waste story, because it's nothing like that. Uh, it's about the excess waste in America and Canada and the world. 40% um, of the food in the United States is never eaten, is a number I saw. Yeah. What do you know about that? I uh, know it's, it's pretty accurate. So if you just think about, you know, when you go to the grocery store, everything is looking beautiful. It's uh, uh, round. It's the perfect shape. It's almost, you know, everything looks the exact same. And then if you have a garden, you know, think of the difference. What happens with that food that might not be perfectly round? Or what happens to that uh, cauliflower that might have uh, an extra head coming out of it? You know, generally, uh, consumers, they want things to look really nice. There's a lot of food that gets thro thrown away as a result. Same thing with, with restaurants. If you just kind of look around next time you're out to eat, really pay attention to how much that food goes to waste. How many of those plates are fully finished or brought back home? Well, that's a slide. That, uh, right now I'm just talking about the idea that people, that a huge amount of food is wasted, uh, not just because it just doesn't, um, because it has a distorted shape. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in, this, in this food waste documentary, Just Eat It, uh, I think there's a I, one scene I remember now uh, of a, of a must have been tons of bananas. Yeah. And they had blemishes or they were misshapen. They claim in the documentary that, that the banana companies actually have a, what's the word, a, a platonic form, yeah. a platonic yeah. ideal of what a banana should look like. And if they don't, if it doesn't fit, they just throw it into the trash. They'll grade and tier produce. That's, uh, you know, if you talk to any commercial farmer, that's just uh, sort of par for the course is uh, they'll set aside this sort of this second tier produce. Sometimes they'll donate it to organizations like the food bank, and a lot of times they'll plow it under. Um, so, you know, it's a huge part of our mission is to rescue as much of that food that would otherwise end up in a landfill um, as we can. So that's, uh, you know, a lot of it's working with end consumers, a lot of it's working with farmers. And, uh, you know, last year alone, that's about seven million pounds of food. Well, I think one of the things we, uh, you know, just as a collateral mention of this, I want to I want to say because I, I was looking at a chart of the of the solid waste that is resulting from this. I mean, this is a consequence uh, of this waste. Uh, the bad consequence is good food is not eaten, mm -hmm. not got, not used. And a secondary consequence is that the largest content in landfills in the United States is food waste. The largest content of landfills in the United States is food waste. This is, you know, we should be thinking about this because this is the stuff that can come, um, goes rotten and, and starts producing things like methane gas. Yeah, yeah. So meth, uh, landfill methane gas is one of the worst pollutants uh, out there in the environment. Yeah. Uh, and when we throw our food into the trash and then put the trash in the can and then the truck and then the landfill and it's sealed in these, these landfill waste sites, it's just bubbling up with methane which is uh, oftentimes just polluting the, the earth. So $48.3 billion of food in the United States is thrown yeah. away every year is another number. And here in our own county, it's over 20% of our local landfills food. Um, one of the staggering statistics that we, we hear a lot is, you know, if the amount of methane um, emitted from just food alone were its own country, it'd be third behind the U.S. and China. Cool. So this is a very, and that's, you know, obviously on a global level. So it's a huge, you know, I don't think people really realize the, how immense uh, the pollution is from just food waste. If people went back and looked at the, at the program we did on animals uh, as food, uh, we, we, we know, and it's sort of, people giggle about it, but animals are, are great producers of methane themselves yeah, just yeah. in the process of living. But we're not talking about the animal, the animal produced methane from the process no, of living. No. We're talking just about food just waste. waste. Just food waste. Yeah. Absolutely don't need to waste this food and, and uh, produce methane fill up landfills, and have people go hungry. Yep. Yeah. Um, so where does this food come from? You, you mentioned you go to a restaurant and you look around you. So you think of places, you know, uh, a study at the University of Arizona that I, I saw said that 
9.5% of food and, and fast food restaurants, fast food restaurants, this is a place you think people just come in, scarf up everything and eat it, and yeah. they just throw away paper and they, they're out of there. Almost 10% of, the, of that food is wasted. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the, the, we're seeing a lot of food waste and we're able to rescue it on a large scale from a lot of the commercial farmers, from people's backyards. Um, where we see a lot of food waste that we can't always get involved in on the scale that we like is just from restaurants. Uh, so it could be, you know, generally when consumers order, they're, you know, your eyes are a lot bigger than your stomach sometimes. And it leads to situations where if they don't bring it home, a lot's left on their plate. Um, UCSB has a really interesting project that they did where they eliminated the trays and they have just, they've cut so much food waste from their program just because the simple act of knowing that you can have as much food as you want it just leads to a situation where you take more than you need. There's no yeah. repercussion, no reason why you Might as well take put that pie on the tray too. I may not yeah, want it, but yeah. there's room for it, and Absolutely. I don't want to go back if I do decide I want it. Well, and I worked in a kitchen for a long time, and you, um, and I'd encourage anybody who's watching the program, go back and you know just look, look uh, in a dumpster or a garbage can that's anywhere near a restaurant or a grocery store, and there's a lot of food. Um, we're lucky enough, we go to all the grocery stores in the area daily to pick up their surplus food. Yeah, you um, have a, that's what I'm getting right to that. Grocery rescue. I, grocery rescue is the next item on my list of things to do, and I think that's what you were talking about. Tell us about what that is. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, a few drivers countywide who go around to most major grocery stores every day and pick up their surplus food. Um, a good example of what that surplus food is is when you uh, have eggs, for example, and it says sell by November 4th. Well, they're going to anticipate that three weeks that those eggs might sit in your fridge, yeah. but they can't sell them past that date. So what we'll do is we know that there's at least two or three weeks of shelf life where those eggs are delicious, nutritious. We'll go buy, rescue all that surplus, and then get it out to nonprofit agencies. Yeah, I think that's in the, in the movie, uh, in a documentary that I discussed, and I think people need to, I really, really hope people watch this, uh, this thing. Uh, there's so much misinformation, partly misinformation that's intentionally misinformative, Absolutely. I think. You know, if, if man, you, just what you just said, the sell-by date is not a bad-by date. Nope. There's a, all kinds of products out there that are perfectly edible, uh, long after the supermarkets and the manufacturers would want it off the shelves because yeah. uh, they have other things coming and they and, and all. But, but these are perfectly pro uh, edible products. And somebody has made the point uh, that if this might be a marketing gimmick. Absolutely. Because they code this. They don't have to let you read the sell-by date. Mm -hmm. If that's only there for the purposes of the commercial use of that product, they don't have to, consumer doesn't need to know that, and it does them no harm not to know it by and large. Yeah, so if you look at a great example is canned goods. So there's no national legislative body or no uh, regulatory body that regulates and says, hey, Campbell's, you have to say that for that tomato soup, it's a year shelf life. It's totally, it's an arbitrary date. Yes. And if you are, again, let's say a national cha chain, if you're Glenn's Soup, and you sell somebody a can of soup, and let's say after a year that date passes, Glenn Soup wants you to throw that away and go back and buy more soup. That's right. It's not in the best interest uh, in terms of profit for that person to, you know, use and, and, and try to spread their resources the, the best they can. They want you to throw that away. Sure. Thinking, and that's a good example. If you take something like tomatoes or, or tomato soup, that's perfectly good and nutritious a year and a half after the use by date, yeah. let yeah. alone the sell by date. But you know, it's either that or a lot of time it's also marketing. If they have a new uh, sticker that they want you to see, it's the same reason you can't go to uh, the Apple store and get a generation one iPhone. There are plenty of good iPhones out there. They work great and they'd be good for people who might be new to the cell phone mm -hmm. market. They're not gonna sell. They want their newest product yeah. out on the shelves. Well, they, they are and, and, and it's uh, supermarkets want it, all, want it moved out too. Um, so I think we, we, if, you, if you look at that program again, just eat it. Uh, one of the things you're going to see in that program, and I'll, I'll just give you a preview, is a, a, a stunning photo of, a, of him with uh, of the, uh, the, the male character uh, uh, standing outside, if I remember correctly, a huge dumpster with, just filled with hummus, with sealed plastic packages of completely untouched packaged hummus that are there for the taking, and they're completely healthy and fine, and the store just for whatever reason, decided to move these out because the manufacturer didn't want them on. I don't know if it was a sell-by date or if yeah. it was uh, what it was.
But that's the kind of thing that happens. And this is part of the huge waste of food that we're talking about yeah. where groceries uh, just dump the stuff in the back. Uh, sometimes because it's not labeled properly. I mean, that may be, there may be some issue there, but, but this food is still good inside of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we see a lot, you know, everything, basically anything you can sell in the grocery store, we will uh, receive from those grocery stores every day. And that can range from hummus to fresh produce to eggs to milk to bread. Um, and we're I, lucky enough to have some really good partners who are conscious of how much they throw away. And how I, much I, they give. I, just to be fair here, I think the one thing I did here was that the, the date on milk is often an uh, actual use by date. Yeah, yeah. And there is some difference, uh, like an expiration, there's expiration date, there's a use by date, there's a sell by date, there's a best by date. Mm -hmm. Expiration uh, is usually pretty firm. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't ever distribute or take right. anything that's past the expiration date, whereas the sort of best buy and sell buy are pretty arbitrary. It's, it's all self-proposed uh, by the actual manufacturer. And, and, and also some of this food that is starting to expire it could be salvaged or protected, it could be frozen, mm -hmm. uh, processed into canned foods or otherwise used. So, um, good. You get the, the local supermarkets uh, or grocery stores are helping you by giving you some of the stuff they would otherwise put into landfill? Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, in the South County one um, a staff member who just every day, every weekday, they'll drive around and they'll go to hit up most of the major grocery chains and get that surplus food. We also have some wonderful volunteers who've helped and do it with bread every, every day of the week. Same thing in the North County. Um, yeah, and it, it, you know, last year, for example, that's about 20% of the food that we get distributed is just from grocery rescue. It's from rescuing this surplus food from grocery stores. From the local, well, I just want to mention, and you also mentioned that there are people, you know, uh, Gary Krasnoff, who was on uh, our previous show, as I mentioned, the animal show, uh, uh, who is a person who is involved himself in helping recover food from neighborhoods, uh, people grow it in their backyard, mm -hmm. tree uh, orchards or, or whatever foods, and he'll go out, this group goes out and gets small amounts of produce uh, from individual growers, otherwise uh, it would not get used because it was maybe more than they needed. Yeah, yeah. And you're involved with the Backyard Bounty program. Yeah, Backyard Bounty, there are a lot of wonderful local gleaning programs. We're really lucky to have in Santa Barbara County a lot of different organizations that help out. Backyard Bounty is one of them that will they'll go out um, and as you said, it could be someone has an orange tree. They might not have the resources to pick it. It might be way more oranges than they need, even though they, they love orange juice. But um, we'll have uh, sort of volunteers and staff members mobilized to go pick that excess fruit. It's also gleaning from fields. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Veggie Rescue also does a wonderful job in the county. Food from the Heart, I also believe, has a similar program. Um, so there's some really cool grassroots organizations like Backyard Bounty that will go and actively rescue this food and do it on a larger scale too. So it could be your backyard, you have an extra orange tree, but it could also be um, you know, innovative produce up in Santa Maria. They have a couple acres of extra cauliflower. We'll go do the exact same thing and have, a, have you know, just a few times in the last two months alone. Well, be the, 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 there might be an excess product. It might, it might have grown too much and, yeah. and somebody come and recover that and use it for good purposes. Yep. But there's also, but the idea of gleaning is an interesting one to me. It's an ancient, ancient idea. A lot of history. A lot of history. It's in the Bible. Uh, yeah. The idea of gleaning is, you know, you leave a crop at the edge of your field so people who might uh, not be doing so well, uh, people for the in poor. poverty, can, can come and get it. Uh, it's yeah. a very old practice. That I we're think really in Europe, to, uh, to this state, in many countries of uh, continental Europe, uh, you're, it's illegal to, for own, owners of orchards and, and uh, harvested lands to stop gleaners from coming in. They're allowed, really? they're allowed to come in and you know, within a certain time of the harvest and take what's left. Okay. Uh, and that's a recognition that, uh, that there is stuff that would be wasted otherwise. Yeah. And it goes to a better purpose if at least a few people are allowed to put the effort to get it and, and make, make good of it. Wonderful idea. Yeah, and we have a lot of, you know, I think both in the county and the national scale, we have a lot of education to do. Because if, if you're a landowner, one of the, and understandably, you're running a business, you might be worried about uh, liability, profit, mm -hmm. um, some of these things that are real factors in your business. First of all, in California, all those donations are tax deductible. And if you're a commercial farmer, there also, there's AB 152, which provides 10 to 20% of production costs back to the farmer on top of any federal uh, tax deductions that you can take. I, I, I explain that, what, what's the sure, benefit they're getting? Sure. So basically, let's say, um, you know, if you're a farmer and you donate to the food bank or another charitable organization, 
um, you can claim uh, the, the value on your, on your federal tax returns. In addition, at a state level, let's say it costs $100 uh, to produce a certain crop, mm -hmm. you get $10 back in addition to your federal tax deductions that you can take oh, for that, so that's for good. charitable giving. So somebody is, that's, that's legislation designed to help f facilitate this. Yeah, but yeah. around the world, now I, I, the numbers around the world aren't as onerous as they are in Western countries, uh, you know, 30% of the food is wasted maybe versus 40 or 50% in Western countries. But in, in, in those countries, the, the needs are even more desperate. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of any kind of equivalent program? Uh, yeah, I, I know the food bank of Santa Barbara is specialized, localized, and works in a modern industrial country. Yeah. But uh, what do you know about what's happening in the third world and other parts of the world to try to get this food uh, that is otherwise wasted? Well, I think the model of sort of food banking has really expanded globally. It started with, uh, I think St. Mary's was the first food bank out of Arizona, and now places like South Africa, um, Australia. Um, last count, it was over 15 uh, countries in Africa alone had sort of accepted this food bank model because it makes sense. You have a sort of focal distribution point where all the donors can give their food rather than, you know, if you're a farmer or a retailer, even a small market, it could, it could be, you know, Northern Africa. Um, you don't want to have to coordinate with a lot of different charitable organizations. It makes more sense to give to one and they already have the partnerships and networks to give out. So I think it, there's a lot more expanding it could do, certainly, because there's a lot of waste. Right. Um, but the model has really taken on uh, first nationally and now uh, internationally. So it's, it's kind of amazing that it's, you know, it's a relatively new phenomenon. Um, the other way that food uh, that waste uh, occurs, just to take this a little further, is sometimes you say, well, uh, you know, uh, they, they grow apples that are distorted or um, damaged or, but, or other fruits or vegetables that are not going to be sold in the supermarkets because they don't meet that Paragon, yeah, they don't meet the design model, but they are then uh, otherwise used. They're juiced, uh, processed, uh, and but even when they're juiced and processed, there's a lot of pulp and other fiber materials that are, are uh, result. And I've seen some not in the documentary that we mentioned, but I've seen on some recent programming about how they are trying to repurpose uh, this product, which you. I, I would say that the great juicing companies, you know, and they, they were in the program. You know, there's places produced gazillions of gallons mm -hmm. of, of tomato juice or uh, apple juice or whatever, but they end up with huge amounts of pulp. Yep. Core, seeds, all this. Um, most of it, I, you know, I was under the um, image that went to feed animals or something. But yeah. Apparently not so much. Not so much. It's cheaper just to run it into it in, in the landfill. Mm -hmm. Some people are now are trying to... Uh, find other uses for that, uh, including human food products uh, uh, directed toward uh, people who are interested in vegetarian life styles and, and other things. You are, are you familiar with any of this? Yeah, yeah. So we encountered a little bit here locally where, uh, you know, it could be um, the, the celery stalks, the, you know, the, the bottom of the celery stalk, uh, you know, part of the broccoli or, or cabbage that, you know, that's not the head. Um, and, you know, we've come up with a couple different ideas, making coleslaw out of it. Uh, we've also worked with some of the local, you know, animal feeding organizations to try to repurpose it for, you know, uh, uh, animals and farms. In the North County, we actually were, uh, partner with a pig farmer, so we'll take a lot of that stuff, even if it's, you know... Pigs lead with about anything. I'm about told. anything. And we'll, we'll separate, and a lot of it's good stuff. You know, these are um, uh, vegetables that might not be, it takes a lot of work and requires processing that we don't have to get it out to, you know, mm -hmm. our partners mm -hmm. in the community, so we'll, we'll send it to this pig farm. Um, and it's, you know, it's a nice relationship. There's definitely a lot of, the worst case scenario, again, is that ending up in a landfill. Um, yes. And I would say, you know, it, a lot of it is, going back to that, I think it is, might be an illusion or that uh, it's cheaper to throw it away for uh, retailers. We're really working on a national level uh, to educate the largest retailers first that, hey, between, you know, tax returns, maybe good, good publicity for your, your manufacturer, it's not cheaper. Give it to food banks, give it to charities, and it, there's really a lot you can do with it. Or if not to charities or food banks, there are these sort of second tier, whether it's second tier farmers markets or second tier markets, where uh, France has really done this with a lot of that, that produce that might not be the right shape. Mm -hmm. they, they've developed a really good market um, for it that's cheaper, it's more affordable than uh, the produce that's perfectly round, but a lot of times it's more fresh. And it's just um, as nutritious. Just as nutritious. It's really an education uh, campaign that they, they launched that helped made it happen. And, you know, 
to do something in this I country. I saw really some cool. of this, sort of make like the ugly tomato. It's undesirable. Yeah, to they, they, yeah. and they make it sympathetic that you yeah. want to, yeah, I think I've seen some of those shows. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's good. It's a good gentle way of uh, chiding people into accepting something that's not the, you know, well, part of the degradation of American produce is that we were so fixated on the idea that a tomato had to be this perfectly colored, yeah. red, shaped, solid, undamaged, unblemished product. And we ended up eating styrofoam, you know, yeah. unfortunately. So one can say that we, we got what we deserved and hopefully we're going to be back from that now into something else. So we have a few minutes left. Um, oh, I, I'm sorry, I had I, another deja vu moment here. When you were talking about going to the, the, the pig farms, I remember watching a thing of 20 or 30 years ago about what the Las Vegas uh, buffet food was. Oh, it's incredible, yeah. And they had, back then, um, all this buffet food was being just pushed out the back of the restaurant into trucks and hauled out to hog farms. And these pigs were eating pretty fancy stuff. You know? Filet mignon. For, <laughs> yeah, uh, everything that was Hopefully there's sold. no bacon in there. I think it was pigs, bacon on bacon. I think it was. I don't, I don't know. know. Morally debatable. Yeah. But anyway, the point being that that's not unknown as pigs are a, a, a real recycling machine. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to it. Food Bank, uh, you guys do great work. Uh, how can people help? Well, there are a lot of ways. So we purchase, again, talking like a, around $7 million of that $10 million is either donated or USDA food. Uh, the remaining $3 million, we, we buy. Uh, we buy a lot of food. So a good example is that those undesirables mm -hmm. might be a head of cabbage that's too small. Um, we'll buy it at cent on, for cents on the dollar, uh, you know, mm -hmm. locally and at a statewide level. So financial donations help. They help keep the lights on. They help us purchase this food. Food donations are a huge help. If you have maybe a couple trees in your backyard that are, you know, it's beyond what you need, let us know. Well, it, that's interesting because I, I think some of the people feel, well, I just don't have enough to make it worth your while. But yeah. you say no. You you can. It, it is worth your while. Yeah, drop it by. We have never, uh, unless it is uh, dog food, pet food, which we can't <laughs> take, and clearly like past its expiration uh -huh. date, come by the food bank, donate it. You know, it, that really keeps us going. Um, that and, and, you know, just general community support, volunteer support, we run on volunteers. So what kind of work would volunteers do? Oh, anything. It could be up on a, up on a ladder picking plums one day. It could be helping out a nonprofit, do some shopping at the food bank. It, it can be driving a van to go pick up bread from Ralph's. You know, you tell us your interests, what you're interested in doing. It could be clerical duties, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll find you the right match. And the amount of uh, and, and the cash contributions, as you said, help to keep the door, keep the lights on, the refrigeration, yeah. get well, the refrigeration on. I imagine we, we have about uh, thirty-five thousand square feet of warehouse space uh, between the north and south warehouses. Uh, right now, about a little over five thousand square feet of cooler and freezer space. Our overhead is, you know, it's considerable, and we've had really good community support. And it's it literally is what keeps the lights on. We're not a a government-funded organization. We really depend on the community. Okay. Well, we're going to wind up here toward the end of it. Uh, again, uh, I want to thank Juanita and Ali back in the studio for their work as directors. Uh, <laughs> sorry we couldn't get that video up, though. The, you folks, I, I want everybody who's watching this, if you have any curiosity, please go online, try to find this uh, uh, Just Eat It uh, documentary about food waste. Uh, I think it's worth seeing.